I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. Today we are celebrating New York style and design, including a wide range of homes that define what Gotham luxury really is. We have this Gilded Age gem on Park Avenue and the maximalist retreat of a Brooklyn blogger. A traditional facade hides ultra-modern surprises in the West Village. Plus, we explore graceful minimalism in this bright and airy Chelsea loft. But first, lifestyle and social media star Athena Calderon gives us a tour of her newly renovated Brooklyn townhouse. It just needed a little bit of love and I was up for the challenge to kind of overhaul and take over this renovation project. Welcome to Open House NYC. This week we are all about homes that help define New York style, design, and luxury. So it's fitting we are getting started with best-selling author, designer, and tastemaker Athena Calderon. Now if you're interested in all manners of lifestyle, interiors, entertaining, fashion, and food, then you've probably found yourself browsing her lifestyle blog, I Swoon. And judging by her legions of followers, you're not alone. Now she shows off the renovation of her family's stately Greek Revival townhouse house in Cobble Hill, Brooklyn. Athena paid homage to the original details while creating a bright and uniquely curated home that's as swoon-worthy as it is comfortable, and one that inspires her every day. Hi, I'm Athena Calderon. I'm an author, I'm an interior designer, I'm a lifestyle expert and chef and I wanna take you through a tour of my home in Cobble Hill, Brooklyn. My husband and I bought this townhouse in 2015 and it was kind of not in the best shape. It's a Greek revival home, but it just needed a little bit of love and I was up for the challenge to kind of overhaul and take over this renovation project. So here we are in my living room. Because we had come from loft living in Dumbo, the very first thing I knew I wanted to do was open up this space. Unfortunately, a lot of the original molding details were stripped away from the house. So I did a lot of research. I even went to some of my neighbors who still had all of those historical details. So we added the panel molding and the crown molding that would normally have been seen in the late 1800s in Cobble Hill. One of my favorite original features in the home was this medallion, so I knew I wanted to keep that and bring it back to life. Some other original details that I really wanted to amplify was this gilded gold mirror. It's just so dramatic and identifiable to a townhouse and the black marble fireplace. When I start to kind of build the design dialogue of a room, I always start with one piece. And in this room, that one piece was this very sofa. It's 1970s, it's kind of low and loungy and bulbous. In order to create some sort of contrast, I wanted to make sure that the table in materiality was completely in opposition. So this is sharp edged and angular and a harder marble material as opposed to this velvet. Cooking and design always work in tandem for me. I wanted to do something different, so I decided to do a square kitchen island. However, I was a little concerned that this big monolithic square was going to dominate the space too much and be too heavy. I made it feel a little bit more like a piece of furniture by adding legs and raising it off the ground to give it a little bit of levity. And I also amplified that idea of a piece of furniture by making the face feel a a little bit more like a dresser that you might find in a bedroom. I knew I wanted the lower half of the kitchen to be kind of dark and grounding and that only amplified how light and bright everything is up above. So the name of the stone here in my kitchen is called Calicutta Pawanazzo and it has this beautiful rich kind of warm veining of like this amber and brown mixed with harsh black and I really love strong veined marble that offers a lot of contrast. And I knew I wanted the marble to be on the countertop to wrap up the wall and then turn onto itself for this shelf. I don't believe that you should only put decorative objects in your living room and in your dining room. Your kitchen really should be an extension of your home because your objects hold memories and they make your home feel really personal and really layered. 
One of my absolute favorite features in my home are these doors. It kind of creates this indoor-outdoor living that's almost more Californian than New York. We definitely spend a lot of our time in spring, summer, and fall out here on this terrace. So now that I've shown you the entire parlor floor, I think we should go upstairs and I'll show you one of the most calm and serene spaces in the house. I would say that in my home, one of the spaces that people seem to love the most and was my number one Instagram was this very bathroom. The pink marble is a really special feature and a really special stone. It has a lot of kind of motion and movement and it's really dreamy. I also really love this vintage 1930s Murano light fixture. It has these like beautiful, soft, sensuous curves. I started to see that as I was making these choices, Choices, everything felt a little bit soft. So I started to insert black elements. I made the window frames black, this metal detail that's happening in the fireplace, and I even painted the mirrors that hang over my vanity black, a contrast that really adds kind of visual intrigue and curiosity to a space. So here we are in my family room, which is the perfect place to end this tour because it's where we end almost every day as a family. So if you guys liked some of the design tips that I offered here today, why not pick up a copy of my new book, Live Beautiful, that just published. Thank you so much for touring my Brooklyn home. Stick around because up next, we are in Chelsea to explore the ins and outs of this minimalist loft. We'll be back in a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we're at this loft in Chelsea with architect Nina Cook-John. Of course, any gut renovation is a balancing act, especially when the home is a bit light challenged. Check out Nina's ingenious solutions for a client that brightened every corner and definitely involved thinking inside the box. Well, cube, to be more specific. See what I mean? Hi, I'm Nina, principal of Studio Cook John. Welcome to my Chelsea Loft project. Loft apartments have really long footprints with light coming in only at the front and the rear. We really needed to get lots of light into the center of the apartment, so we devised the cube to respond to that challenge. Once you get off the elevator, you step right into the wide open living space. The built-ins at the front not only provide much needed storage, but they also provide seating under the wonderful windows where you can sit and enjoy views on the city below. On the outside of the built-ins, they all look uniform, but each is customized to whatever is going inside. For the interior seating area, we wanted to make it warmer and cozier. So we added a Moroccan rug along with pillows and throws on the neutral sofa. We used a double-sided sofa as one installation that faces both seating areas. Organic materials really ground the space. These two wooden chairs complete this area. And we doubled the natural light coming into the apartment by designing an oversized mirror. Often we have to work with existing furniture. Lucky for us, the clients had this great sarin and dining table and salvage pendant lights from the Plaza Hotel, which makes the dining room work perfectly with the rest of the apartment. We carried the white color scheme into the kitchen as well as organic materials like the wood accents and marble countertops. Which brings us to the cube, which houses multiple design and pragmatic functions, both inside and out. The profile is lower than the ceiling of the apartment, allowing natural light to filter throughout. This solved the problem of maintaining light throughout the apartment while adding a new room. Also, the lights on the top of the cube illuminate the hallways on both sides. At the back of the apartment are two bedrooms, the kids' room and the master suite. While renovating the apartment, we discovered two openings where there used to be windows. We decided to take advantage of that by installing built-in bookcases and a desk, making a perfect place for a dinosaur collection. In the master suite, it was all about flexibility and privacy. 
We created these pocket doors that separate the space, but also create spaces within the space. For the bedroom itself, like the rest of the apartment, it was all about efficiency. A built-in headboard, side table, and match and overhead panel created the perfect nook for a warm, cozy bed. Our projects are site-specific. Each one is tailor-made to the location. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at our Chelsea Loft. We are gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we are in the West Village with the architect of this unique townhouse on one of the neighborhood's most idyllic streets. Welcome back. Now we're with architect Greg Sharp at his client's newly renovated townhouse in the heart of the West Village. It's located on St. Luke's Place, one of the neighborhood's most picturesque blocks. The perfectly preserved classic facade hides ultra-modern minimalist interiors that still feel warm and inviting, which is fitting because it's also an entertainer's dream home where the festivities can effortlessly flow outside. Take a look. Hey, I'm Greg Sharp, and welcome to this West Village townhouse that I designed. It's located on St. Luke's Place, one of the most idyllic blocks in New York City. It was built in the 1880s, and we restored the facade to its original condition. Let's go take a look. As soon as you walk in, you notice the dramatic double height windows at the rear of the home. This makes everything more bright and airy than your typical townhouse. We designed the home to have many levels and different ceiling heights throughout. Here we are in the step-up living room. The fireplace is a definite focal point. It has a custom stone door that opens to reveal a television. Because I wanted all the public areas in the house to have a connection, we created this opening in the floor to connect the living room with the kitchen and the backyard. We created this glass bridge and rear balcony. This balcony adds a bit of drama and is a great place to catch the action if you're having a garden party or to just step outside for a breath of fresh air. I have to talk about this grand staircase. Sculptural in its form, it's the main unifying element of the house. The staircase creates a visual experience. As your perspective changes, the stairs reveal the house and its artwork, including a custom Gabriel Scott chandelier. The last flight of stairs are made of glass and steel, and there is a large custom skylight bulkhead to let natural light flow down to the lower levels of the house. This kitchen is clean and modern and reflects the client's healthy lifestyle mainly because it's so big you can actually burn calories moving around it. There are two islands, lots of counter space, terrazzo floors. It's also open to a family room with another fireplace, a dining area, and a rear yard. This is truly one of the most special places in this home. It has a barbecue area for summer grilling, a lounging area where you can soak up the sun, with landscaping embedded within the sides and the top. The yard is also terraced to allow for larger plantings and to provide you with that rarity in New York, a natural backdrop. In fact, this area feels like your own private park. Up here, there's both a north and south roof terrace with plenty of places to relax high above the city. There's even a custom marble pool that's perfect for soaking on hot summer days. And I can't think of a better place to end this tour. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I've combined modern and traditional elements to create a new take on the West Village townhouse. Just after the break, blogger Grace Atwood gives us a tour of her colorful abode. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we join blogger Grace Atwood at her lively abode in Williamsburg. Grace founded the Stripe.com, which she calls a lifestyle blog for the stylish bookworm. Her home is a maximalist dream, both colorful and happy and decorated with things that inspire her. Take a look.
Hi, I'm Grace Atwood and welcome to my Brooklyn apartment. I am the founder of a lifestyle site called thestripe.com as well as the co-host of a podcast called Bad on Paper. So today I'm going to show you how I turned my empty Brooklyn apartment into a dreamy, colorful, and bold home. I work from home, so my biggest goal was to design a space that's really inspiring and leaves me energized and excited to wake up every morning and hit the ground running. I love color and I'm definitely not afraid to use it. When I moved in, the space had gray painted plywood floors. I've painted every other square green. A ton of work, but so worth it. I'm really happy that I did this little DIY to make my apartment feel more me. Entertaining is really, really important to me. It's really nice to have everyone gathered around the table. I immediately gravitated towards this table as I loved the brass wishbone legs at the bottom. It just makes it feel really special and unique. Right off of the dining room is a sideboard that houses all of my favorite accoutrements. You'll also see some skulls. I think it's because I'm naturally a pretty cheerful person, so the skulls add a little bit of edge. The living area is designed for maximum media consumption. One thing I did that was really important to me was face both couches facing towards the TV so that everyone can lay down the long way. And when I'm finished watching TV and I just wanna get away from it all, I head to the bedroom. Living in New York can be so stressful. So when I designed my bedroom, I really wanted it to feel like a calming oasis. So I kept it very, very neutral, very, very calming. It's my little place where I hole up from the world. My bedroom is definitely very much influenced by my sister. She designed the wallpaper for me, she did my bedding for me, and she also designed the fabric on the chaise lounge. That had been my family for years, and it was falling apart, so my sister actually had it covered in her fabric making it all the more special. My podcast is about books, my website has a book club feature, and I have books everywhere, and they're kind of a part of my interior design. I hope that you found my space to be as inspiring as I do. I think it is so important to make a space your own and create something that you want to come home to every day. And I will see you on my blog. Coming up just after the break, interior designer Matthew White shows off his impressive Gilded Age home on Park Avenue. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're with interior designer Matthew White at his stunning duplex on Park Avenue. Originally part of a mansion designed by Stanford White, every inch has been thoughtfully designed to complement these one-of-a-kind original details. Matthew shows us around. Hi, I'm Matthew White, an interior designer here in Manhattan with the design firm White Web, and I want to welcome you to my home. The building is located on Park Avenue and is one of the last Gilded Age mansions in existence on this street. The building was built in 1891. The head architect was Stanford White, the notorious and famous and fantastic architect of the Gilded Age. This was originally a single family mansion that was then carved up into apartments. And I'm lucky enough to just have one of them. So when you enter the home, you first come into what seems like a small, cozy, low-ceilinged entryway, but it opens up into this big, grand room. The first impression is, wow, look at the space. The massive fireplace, the coffered ceiling, the paneled walls, all that wonderful Stanford White Gilded Age history right before your eyes. I'm a preservationist at heart, so I love history, I love original architecture, and this room was just kind of dripping with it, but it was missing some things. And so what I did was I found the perfect silk damask for the walls that would connect the paneling below and the frieze and the coffered ceiling above to make the room a unified whole. The coffee tables I designed, and they are bronze replica because of the Parthenon. The sofas are covered in a very plush but vivid green, which adds a lot of life to this otherwise brown room. Any living room that is wonderful to entertain in needs a bar, and I have a bar here, but I didn't want to look at it all the time, so I hid it behind panel doors. They open up to reveal the bar at a drop of a hat, so whether we're having two people over for a few drinks or a cocktail party for 60, we're ready. 
The master bedroom is sort of a departure from the rest of the apartment. The bedroom reflects a different ancient culture, which is India. I chose the Indian theme for the bedroom just because I'm crazy about Indian architecture and design. The bedroom has 12-foot ceilings, so we had a lot of vertical space to play with. And I took the bed, which I designed, all the way to the ceiling. And it's really a room within the room. And I love that feeling. It's very cozy again and grand at the same time. I think that might be one of the themes of this apartment, is that it's cozy and grand. You know, when a designer designs his own home, there's this sort of pressure to make a statement to the outside world about your ultimate contribution to the world of design or your personal taste. But for me, it really comes down to what I like and what I love. I hope you enjoyed the tour today. It was a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?